angiogenesis uh, in the Telos retina. So before we go into a quick uh, introduction into the area, so eye is the primary uh, visual sensing organ and uh, um, the initial step is mechanical. So light enters into the eye via the cornea and the lens and is refracted and falls on the retina. Retina is made up of seven different cell types arranged in uh, three different layers. So uh, the incoming light is sensed by rods and the cones and uh, the light energy is converted into chemical and then uh, electrical signal and then it is passed downstream to array of neurons finally to retinal ganglion cells which in turn via their axons send <coughs> this signal which bund the axons bundled up to form optic nerve to the visual processing center in the brain. So in this whole visual process Retina is the primary sense organ, and if you look at the retina, it is made up of seven different cell types, uh, six neurons and one, uh, one glia, and um, these neurons are arranged in three different layers, and this you can clearly see in the histological sample here of the mammalian retina, mice retina is shown here, you can see all the neurons uh, being arranged in three layers, outer nuclear layer, inner nuclear layer, and ganglion cell layer. Uh, similar arrangement and similar type of neuron is also seen in telos. Medaka retina is shown here, Arvik Medaka retina. Uh, all the neurons are arranged in the in three different layers, very similar to mammals, and uh, the different types of neurons are also very similar to uh, mammals. So this similarity also is seen in during development of the eye. Here you see that um, I have uh, placed the eye development in six different stages uh, for comparison between species. Uh, human, mouse, and chick retina are shown in gestation days, and uh, the telos model, zebrafish, and medaka are shown in hours post fertilization. You can clearly see that the fish models are uh, 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 develop, I mean, fish models develop rapidly, and by uh, three days, the medaka retina is fully patterned and uh, functional. So, um, if you look at molecular markers, genes that governs the patterning, you can also see that uh, there's very high similarity between mammals and uh, the fish. Uh, mouse uh, and zebrafish are compared here. Certain genes like Pax6 are duplicated in the fish, and I have shown the one which shows very close uh, expression, uh, which is very closely expressed as, uh, as a mammalian counterpart. So, Apart from all these uh, similarities to, uh, that Elos retina shows to mammals, um, this model is also very useful because the amount of eggs that is produced is very high, fertilization is uh, external, the development of the embryo is also external and rapid. Um, a lot of, um, I mean, the small size enables us to view this embryo in, um, under a microscope. There's a wide array of uh, techniques available, uh, genetic biochemical uh, techniques, uh, like this one is a, a rotating drum experiment which measures the optokinetic response of the fish and one could uh, very easily record this response by using a camera and attached to a, a microscope. So um, these are quite few but impressive advantages of the fish. Um, so I'll be uh, presenting you two different processes, neurogenesis and uh, vasculature. Uh, neurogenesis in zebrafish is quite well established and so we use that information to characterize three different receptors, nuclear receptors, TLX, PNR and LXR and we further use um, knockdown technology and uh, look at uh, the importance of LXR in zebrafish eye development. We also use Medaka as a comparative model, we establish the patterning of the eye and uh, we also look at opsin expression. So the second part would be vasculature. So, um, um, here we establish the timeline of retinal vasculature of um, zebrafish and we also develop a, a pharmaceutical tool for a small molecule screen using this using vasculature of the retina. So uh, coming uh, first to the neurogenesis, as I said earlier, neurogenesis in zebrafish is quite well established and um, you can see that uh, the early neuron, neurogenesis starts in the ventral nasal region and then spreads uh, dorsally and then temporally to cover the entire retina. So this process is called the neurogenic wave. And as it resembles um, an opening of a hand fan, it's also called fan gradient. So in my earlier licentiate work, we had a um, screen for power homeo domain and nuclear receptor genes. And uh, we also characterized some and showed it to be 
uh, expressed in the similar fashion following the fan gradient in um, uh, established fan gradients in, in uh, zebrafish retina. So today I'll be talking about nuclear receptors. So nuclear receptors are transcription factors and it plays an important role in um, development and the normal body homeostasis. So today I will be talking about three nuclear receptors, LXR, TL TLX, and uh, PNR. So I will start with TLX and PNR first. So TLX and PNR are um, very closely related nuclear receptors. You can see uh, their expression is um, uh, from the somatogenesis stage and uh, extends into the larval period. So if you look at the spatial expression by in situ, uh, you can see that uh, TLX is not expressed in the optic primordium when it forms. It is only detected in the forebrain and uh, as the embryo develops, the expression comes up in the optic primordium and peaks at 24 hours. Expression at this stage is also seen in the olfactory placor and the optic tectum. So um, at 24 hours neurogenesis, uh, at 20, uh, from 24 hours neurogenesis in the retina starts. So once this process of neurogenesis starts, you can see that the uh, expression of uh, TLX goes down, uh, as you see here at uh, 36 hours, and then finally at 48 hours, it's totally gone from the retina and is localized in the retinal marginal zone that can be clearly seen in this figure. Uh, <clears throat> PNR, on the other hand, um, uh, follows the fan gradient or the neurogenic wave in the retina that has been already established and uh, uh, by 48 hours you can see that PNR is expressed in the entire photoreceptor layer. Um, outside the retina, PNR is also expressed in the epiphysis and the epiphysis expression is uh, precedes that of uh, retinal expression. So we didn't characterize these two uh, receptors further, uh, but what I can sum up by saying that TLX and PNR both show uh, very high expression similarity to that of um, mammals, both in the brain and uh, in the retina. Uh, they are um, they are quite well characterized. T T TLX uh, is some um, knockout clients in TLX are, have shown aggressive behavior. They show learning difficulties. They have reduced eye and brain size and uh, are of course blind. And uh, PNR is also well characterized. It has been shown to promote uh, rod uh, photoreceptor formation and repressed cone formation, and it has also been linked to cone rod dystrophy. So both of these genes are not maternally contributed, nor they are expressed during gastrulation. LXR, on the other hand, uh, liver X receptor, the third receptor, on the other hand, has been reported to be maternally expressed and to be expressed everywhere during the early development. However, it's spatial temporal. Uh, expression in the brain and the retina is not well characterized and um, a, a quick uh, intro introduction into LXR. LXRs are cholesterol sensors. They uh, prevent cholesterol overload of a cell um, by stimulating various protective mechanisms. Its role in the retina is not established. So we wanted to see what had, where LXR is expressed in the retina and we did that by in situ hybridization. You can clearly see LXR in the early retina. It is expressed everywhere in the retina and the lens. By 36 hours after the neurogenesis starts, expression goes down in the retina, but you can still detect the expression in the lens. By 55 hours, what happens is uh, you can clearly see expression becomes more and more localized to the retinal ganglion cell layer and the uh, optic nerve. Uh, at this stage, uh, you can also see certain uh, nuclei in the brain uh, intensely expressing LXR. So as development uh, proceeds, LXR gets localized in the retinal ganglion cell layer and the retinal pigment epithelium layer uh, in the eye. Now uh, you can see those two regions in the lateral and the medial view uh, at that stage. Uh, so uh, expression more or less stays in the same region at 796 and 120 and at 120 you can also detect expression in the optic nerve. So in the other what happens is uh, expression gets localized in the uh, ciliary marginal zone region where continuous proliferation happens in the fish and uh, is also detected in all the neuronal layers of the <clears throat> eye. So we use morpholino technology to knock down LXR and see what happens. So uh, at one particular concentration, we could uh, get a very good phenotype uh, and we named it as M50 phenotype. So when you compare it to the control, you can obvious, obviously see that the eye and the brain size are reduced and uh, you also see cardiac and yoke edema. <clears throat> So um, we know that this is LXR specific knockdown because we were able to rescue it by artificially uh, injecting synthetic MR LXR mRNA. <clears throat> so what happens to the eye? So to look. At